Oh, Dr. Giroux, it's a shame you weren't around during the Freezer Force days. You would have been quite useful. Oh, well. What a waste. Hey, guys, DB right here, and today I am continuing with What If Zarbon Turned Good? It's part 4. And, well, if you haven't checked out the previous three parts to this story, I suggest you do. When we last left off this story... Zarbon, who is paired with Yamcha, had just found Androids 19 and 20, so we're right at the beginning of the Android Saga. And well, thanks to um, Zarbon being there, Yamcha wasn't absorbed and, I guess you'd say, impaled by Android 19 this time around. Nope. Zarbon was able to put two and two together, the fact that he couldn't sense any energy coming from the, du from the duo, and worked out they were the androids, and managed to um, get Yamcha out of the way just in time, and getting a pretty good shot in on Android 19. I said Android 20 in the previous part, they got shot off at, it was Android 19, sorry. Anyway, moving on... A bit of a battle between Android 19 and Zarbon is happening right then and there, while um, Yamcha's basically just doing his best to basically s stay away from everyone, and is um, trying to signal the others, which also proves to be unnecessary because everyone can sense that Zarbon has um, began powering up and they, they can sense he's fighting with something. So, needless to say, everyone pretty much assembles there at the spot and the the Android 20 calls a halt to um, proceedings as he gazes upon Goku and gives his whole speech on yes I know who you are Goku our creator Dr. Jiro programmed us with all the intimate knowledge about you and your friends here of course Shiro knows nothing about Zarbon. Except for this one. I don't think I know this one. Curious. And he seems to be on par with Android 19 earlier. This is Shiro thinking to himself here. He's not saying this part out loud or nothing. Good. And of course, Goku, of course, suggests a change of scenery to the for the battle. And they, um fly off to that island, but not before Dr. Giro pretty much lays waste to the city anyway. And, well, this is where members of the Dragon Team start to pick up that there is something wrong with Goku, who is huffing and puffing and getting tired just by flying. And, um, well, the battle then basically continues, Goku transforming into Super Saiyan, surprising both Android 19 and 20, but ultimately they seemed unfazed by the transformation, really underestimating the power of Super Saiyan, but as we know, Goku is weakened, and we pretty much know what happens from this point. Goku charges in, and Goku's losing power relatively quickly, while Android 19 basically remains mostly unscathed, draining Goku's energy, and of course, the Harp virus is definitely taking its toll on the Super Saiyan, ultimately leading to his um, downfall in this battle. Of course, he ain't dead, because by then, Zarbon, yeah, Zarbon, not Vegeta, steps in at this point. Vegeta still hasn't arrived at the battlefield. He's just, um, a little bit more delayed than what he is in the original. He's just not showing up on time, and it's pretty much left, um, Zarbon, who's pretty much the best soldier they've got at this point, I guess you could say. Now... Just only the original. Yamcha is going to fly Goku, Goku home and um, get him the heart medication that he needs so he doesn't, you know, die. Jiro looking to Yamcha and Goku, hm, where do you think you two are going? And he tries to fire a pot shot at the two trying to escape, but Zarbon's able to just get away, get in front of it and pretty much deflect the shot. Sorry to disappoint you, um, number 20 was it? But if you want them, you have to go through me first. Ha! And just what do you think 
a specimen such as yourself can do. We are androids. We are superior to you fleshling beings in every way. Hmm. Is that so? And well, we got Zarbon basically squaring off with um, Android 19. Now, from his little bit of a scuffle with the Android Android 19 earlier, Zarbon has already learnt quite a bit about the androids. He did get some of his energy taken from Android 19 during their brief little scuffle, so he knows not to use his energy attacks so recklessly. Focus on focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat and maybe beating down the android that way. And, well, rest assure you, this time Zarbon's not holding back at all. Now, you're probably thinking, does is Zarbon gonna trans transform like um like he did against Vegeta on Namek, becoming that ugly, more powerful version of himself? Well, actually no. Over the last few years, and thanks to um, him training with all the other Z-Warriors, including Vegeta, he didn't just train with Vegeta all the time, sometimes he was meditating with Piccolo, um, tra training with Krillin on Roshi's Island, assisting with Piccolo, Gohan and Goku's training up at Mount Palzu. Yeah, Zabon was qu quite the sociable tr trainer, you know, he even did a few workout sessions with, um, with Yamcha. The bottom line is, because of all that training and training under all those people, Zarbon can now tap into that power without actually changing his appearance. In other words, he's outgrown that transformation. He, he's now evolved himself to a point he doesn't need to um, change his um, features to tap into that power. But yes, he isn't holding back at all. He is tapping into that power, and Android 19 is definitely on the losing side of this. Much like it was when Vegeta battled him, battled Android 19 in the original. And basically, at um, this point in the story, Android 19 basically has his arms ripped off of him, much like Vegeta did in the original, but by Zarbon, and is eventually then, you know, destroyed on the spot. Hmm. It's too bad you androids could have been useful in the Freezer Force back in the day. Oh well. What a ra what a waste. And what is this all for? All because Goku broke Dr. Jiro's toys all those years ago. My, my. It'd be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. But... I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> and um, this is where basically Vegeta shows up, having witnessed the um, a bit of the carnage that Zarbon had just caused. And Vegeta is not that impressed. Not toward towards Zarbon, towards the androids. Vegeta came here expecting a good fight, yet Android 19 was beaten that easily by by Zarbon. What's, go what's going on here? So Vegeta is more than happy to let Zarbon take on Android 20 as well. Vegeta figured this is worth his time at all. <laughs> you can have at him, Zarbon. But I warn you, if you mess this up, I will have to step in. And you know what that means. Oh, absolutely, Prince. Just remember, I'm not a pushover like that foolish lackey of yours, Nappa. Hmm. Well, that remains to be seen, doesn't it? Zarbon giving him a smirk back. Now, after his battle with um, Android 19, Zarbon pretty much uses a similar attack to what Vegeta used against Android 20. Not at, not sure that he's one that he's 100% capable of taking down Android 20 after he just defeated Android 19. So. Zabon basically scares Dr. Jiro into running away. Much like... Yeah, well, much like Vegeta did in the original. And so, the only way you should row realizes, Android 20 realizes he's gonna win this battle if he goes back to lab and wakes up 17 and 18. So he runs off, Zabon gets a Sensu, 
and he pretty much tells everyone to stay behind, much like Vegeta does, and that he and Vegeta will fi finish things with um, Android 20. Now, now, Zarbon's not telling everyone else to stay back because of uh, sheer overconfidence like Vegeta, or um, just to, you know, one-up everybody. Now, he's genuinely concerned for their safety. I mean, if he hadn't have stepped in before, Yamcha could have ended up killed. You know? And the others, they don't seem all that sort of confident towards taking on these androids. So, so Zarbon is telling them to stay back for their own safety. But he knows he him, himself and Vegeta together are definitely capable of taking down Android 20. Hmm. How about a Prince? Want to come with me? It'll be just like old times. So with that, the duo essentially go after Android 20, and the others, of course, follow along as they do. And, um, well, basically with Zarbon there with Vegeta, it basically makes... He's basically making sure Vegeta keeps his cool, doesn't do anything stupid. Like, um, throw an energy, try to f smoke him out with an energy blast. Because yes, Vegeta does power up and try that little tactic. <laughs> However, Zarbon is there to stop him immediately. You fool! What? Zarbon, unhand me at once! What's the meaning of this? If you fire that energy blast... That android is just going to absorb your energy and use it against you, you moron. Oh, moron? How, how dare you? What are you even babbling about? Zarbon, of course, forced to fill in with Vegeta, and while they're pretty much squabbling up there up the top, Android 20 is lurking around looking for other victims he can prey energy upon, and pretty much goes on to um, absorb Piccolo like he does in the original, Gohan getting, and getting the android off him, and the um, battle pretty much resumes with um, Piccolo pretty much insisting on fighting Android 20 himself. A little payback for what he did to him earlier. Because, yeah, that still happened. Piccolo nearly dying from that shot, then nearly getting absorbed by him. That still happened. And, um, yeah, just like that, um, Dr. Giro is clearly on the losing battle. And just like in the original, your trunk shows up, and then you got Bulma coming in on her plane, and he uses the chance, Shiro uses the chance to um, fire a pot shot at the plane and use the, and use the confusion in order to escape. Damn it! We had him in our sights! Ugh, I knew we shouldn't have let you handle things in the Mechian! This is why I told you guys to stay out of this. Zarbon always sounding also disappointed in everyone else. But with that and with um, the realization that these aren't the droids they're looking for, Trunks gives them a description of what the androids actually look like. <laughs> that Android 18 is a young, beautiful, blonde girl and her twin brother, Android 17, a dashing, dark-haired rogue, wearing an ascot. And so, pretty much with that, everyone is making their way, flying around, trying to find this, um, laboratory. Thanks to, um, Bulma's rough directions on where the lab is. And I think, for now, that's where we're going to be leaving things. So what do you guys think? Did you enjoy this part of the story? How will, um, how will our heroes, you know, deal with this? Is this pretty much going to go the same as it did in the original? Or will, um, the appearance of Zarbon be able to make some sort of difference here in this part of the story? Well, all this and more next time, and I'll see you guys then. Catch you later.